Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you guys about intuitive eating. I recently got an email on intuitive eating and how to transition from tracking macros to intuitive eating and I just wanted to go over that with you, talk to you about my experience with intuitive eating and just maybe give you a little bit more information on what intuitive eating is, if it's for you, if it's for everyone. So let's go ahead and get started. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we're gonna dive right in. So first let's go ahead and kind of define what intuitive eating is. And I am not an intuitive eating expert, so it is possible I'm getting things not as um, exact as they really are, but my understanding of intuitive eating is basically not tracking and not counting and just listening to your body and counting on your body to tell you what you need to eat, eating when you feel hungry, stopping when you feel full, and just kind of going with that sort of idea throughout the day. For a while, I was a member of the American Acad or the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, otherwise known as AND. I recently got an email that had within it a an article from Ohio, from Utah, excuse me, an article from Utah, which is titled "How to Transition from Tracking Macros to Intuitive Eating." So immediately that caught my attention because. I do enjoy tracking macros, but I would love to not have to track macros and feel a little bit more comfortable about everything that I'm doing. But anyways, let's uh, let's get into this article. I'm just going to go ahead and read it, and then we'll stop on parts that seem important. How to transition from tracking macros to intuitive eating. One of the latest diet trends is to track every gram of food you eat and to follow a set allowance of each macronutrient for the day. Tracking macros means you're spending a lot of time and energy on food weighing, measuring, and micromanaging every morsel of food that goes into your body. Here's our first problem. I don't think that macro tracking necessarily means that you're spending a lot of time on food. I don't think weighing measure, and measuring your food takes a lot of time. I think it adds two to five minutes onto your maybe every meal, maybe the whole day, especially once you get used to it, you know what you're doing. And in terms of micromanaging every morsel of food that goes into your body, I don't think that's really fair. I'm more just paying attention to every morsel of food that goes into my body. And ultimately, if you don't want to perpetually gain weight, then you're going to have to pay attention whether you're tracking macros or doing keto or doing paleo or Whole30 or whatever. If you don't, if you have a goal, you have to pay attention. Any rigid food plan that yields obsession and anxiety about food and your body is not something I promote or encourage. I agree. I am not a registered dietitian, but I would agree that any plan that's, that is very rigid and yields obsession and anxiety about food and your body is bad. However, macro tracking does not necessarily mean that you, is not necessarily rigid and does not necessarily create an obsession or anxiety about food. I don't feel obsessed or anxious about my food. In fact, I think tracking your food on my fitness pal is fun. So part of the problem I think that I'm having with this article is just that the way that this RD is defining things is not the way that I understand things to be and is not what I'm practicing. I eat cookies, I eat a lot of cereal, I just track it. That doesn't make me obsessed, it actually makes me, and it doesn't make anything rigid, it actually makes me more flexible because I know that what I'm, and gives me less anxiety now that I think about it because I know that I can have that cereal, it does fit in with my day, and I won't gain weight from it. From it. So a little bit of a disconnect there for me. It's important to clarify, okay, that intuitive eating is weight neutral and fundamentally non-diet in its approach to nourishment and food. Cool. That's what I was trying to say in the beginning, so hopefully that's how I defined it. So if you're looking for some advice and support in stepping away from tracking macros, this post is for you, me. One, recognize that tracking macros is a choice. Realizing that you don't have to micromanage your body by counting every morsel of food is a critical first step. It's a choice to count or not to count, agree. And counting likely isn't keeping you as safe as you think. Tracking and micromanaging for many is what leads to the very chaos and dysfunction with food that they're afraid of. I have not experienced that and the people that I've worked with I've never experienced that with them, and people that I've talked to about this, I have never heard them have that experience. I mainly see that experience happening for people 
who do shows and that's a whole nother kind of dieting and that's not because of macro tracking that's because of doing a bikini bodybuilding what physique sort of style show because the demands are so intense but that's fine bodies don't require exact math to function and in fact often function best mentally physically and emotionally with more flexibility i would agree i tell all of my clients they have a hundred calorie range up and down because it is not exact I don't know exactly how much you moved in the day. I don't know exactly what your BMR is. And we don't even know exactly how many calories are really in the food that you're eating, even if you are tracking it, right? It's just a heat measurement. Also with the functioning best mentally, physically, and emotionally with more flexibility, again, I at least have been able to find, and through talking to my clients, I know that they have been able to find flexibility through macro tracking because it takes away that anxiety of, can I eat this? Is this okay? And tells you it is, it fits, move on. Two, expect change. Don't be scared of the dynamic nature of your body and mind. It's okay. It will very likely feel scary to even contemplate this change in your approach to food, but there's peace on the other side and changes to be expected. Okay, that didn't really tell me much. Three, practice trust. Tracking has taught you that if you figure out just the right mathematical formula, you're guaranteed certain results and success. Except that there is some truth to that. If you can figure out basically what your BMR is, what your maintenance level calories are, then you can figure out basically how many calories to cut by, basically eat that all the time, and you will lose weight. Just like any relationship, as you're working on building trust with your body, experiment, reflect, and take steps towards trust. Except this doesn't really tell us what trusting your body looks like, means, feels like, what that experience should be, what the symptoms, side effects, what examples that would be. Yes, I can breathe without thinking about it, but that is a system at play. In terms of my body telling me when it is hungry, it definitely does that, but it doesn't tell me what foods I'm hungry for or what foods are best for the body right now. The only way I really see that intuitive eating would work is for you to have a very strict background in nutrition and understand what your body does need and override that from what you necessarily want. Then from there, be okay with eating some foods that you want, but that's no longer intuitive eating. For myself, I'm pretty sure from talking to my dad, even my mom, um, if I'm talking to my boyfriend, like our bodies are not telling us, you need egg whites, just one egg yolk. You know, like your body is saying, pancakes sound good, let's have some pancakes. And pancakes are good and you can have some pancakes. This isn't about not eating pancakes or not eating the sweet treats or giving into the cravings that your body has. But it is about ultimately being able to sustain the kind of diet that your body tells you that you want without gaining a bunch of weight or coming upon a bunch of like health conditions because if I were to eat sugar all the time I'm probably gonna have a heart attack or get diabetes or become obese or whatever so I'm not convinced yet that intuitive eating is as intuitive as it sounds or and or is for people who don't have any sort of nutrition background Four, learn to separate nutrition fact from fiction the very premise of the idea of tracking macros assumes that your body needs, your body's needs remain constant day after day. No, it does not. You can have high carb, you can have high carb days or low carb days. You could have high calorie days, low calorie days. You could have a way of eating for when you don't work out, when you do cardio, or you do weightlifting. I give that to some of my clients. So, no, macro tracking does not mean that you are assuming that your body has the same needs every single day. Just completely wrong totally wrong. Five, get really clear about what matters to you in life. Ask yourself whether or not you believe this statement. If it costs you your peace of mind, it's too expensive. I agree, but I've never lost my peace of mind with macro tracking. I have only lost my peace of mind by trying to do intuitive eating or incredibly rigid eating like completely eliminating carbs or processed food. So Yes, that can happen to some people, but just because you track macros does not mean that happens to you. And tracking macros doesn't make that happen to you. So it doesn't just happen from reading a post like this, but I'm hoping this post might have given you some food for thought and lots of permission to explore what's right for you with food and nutrition. I mean, honestly, I have to say it did not. It didn't tell me much except that you can trust your body. 
and that's just not been my experience. I'm personally just not really sold on the idea of intuitive eating. I don't think it is nearly as intuitive as its name implies. I think that there is a huge learning curve to intuitive eating, which this article didn't touch on. I mean, it kind of said you might have to learn. It won't happen in a day, but it didn't tell us how to learn. It didn't tell us how to experiment. It just told us to experiment. And personally, I'm going to have a lot of anxiety if I try to experience, I gain 10 pounds and I'm still supposed to be figuring it out. I don't want to intuitively eat and manage my weight at 10 pounds higher. I want to be able to intuitively eat at this weight, if not a lower weight. And that article didn't show me how to do it. So as a review on that article, that's not really my favorite article that I've ever read on transitioning to intuitive eating. If you guys have any articles on intuitive eating, I would love to read them. So go ahead and like link them below in the comments. I do believe this article should be available for you to look up on ksl.com. You can search how to transition from tracking macros to intuitive eating. So really just trying to give you my two cents and help you figure out if intuitive eating might be for you or if tracking macros is more of the way to go. Give the video like a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel. I do health, wellness, and fitness, vlogging videos, whatever, and I'll see you guys next time.